Hello, this is uh, Laserbeat or David, whichever you prefer, with another Nano Loop tutorial. Quick disclaimer I'm going to be talking about chords and arpeggios, but my knowledge of musical theory is between non existent and laughably bad. So please bear that in mind when you're uh, watching this. Um, Nanoloop has got two monophonic channels and one polyphonic polyphonic channels. We're going to look at the monophonic channels first. This is going to be R and L, which basically function exactly the same. Um, in R, you can only play one note at a time, but you can give kind of the illusion of a chord by using what's called an arpeggio, which is playing one note after the other in rapid succession to kind of trick your mind into thinking that it's hearing a chord when it's actually not. Um, if you press B, and put down a note, you can hear it just playing a note. Just the, turn it down a little bit and extend the um, envelope so we can hear what's going on just a little bit quicker. Press select, press right once. Press B again, that'll take us up to the note. You can see there's a little bar. If you press up and down, this will change the note as I'm sure you're aware. If you press start, you can see the bars change in the bar change into four little squares, and it sounds exactly the same because they're all playing the same note at the moment. If you move, hold down B, move left and right, you can see the little black square changing. If you hold down B, press up, You can hear Nano Loop is playing all four of those notes in rapid succession, which kind of gives the illusion of a chord. Um, and this will continue to repeat for as long as the envelope lasts. So that's effectively infinite. There, it's very, very quick. Um, if you hold down B and right and press left and right, you can change the octave. Um, and this is a way that you can kind of get caught. Um, this is actually a little bit tricky because I can't pick up my machine. If you hold down... Just turn it down a little. Tiny bit. If you hold down B and R, that will change the re-triggering of the note. So it will effectively play the first, second, third, and fourth note once, and then sustain on the fourth note. So if we press left and B once more, you can hear it repeating. If you press B and left once, it will um, go back to playing just once. If you hold down A, and copy that, press select, move to L, paste it down again. You can hear it behaves exactly the same in the L channel. Okay, let's move to S. S behaves a little bit differently. S is polyphonic, whereas R and L are monophonic. So S can actually do true chords. Um, again, knowledge of music theory, basically non-existent, so I don't know what notes you need to make chords. <laughs> um, anyway, if you hold down B, behaves pretty much the same so far. If you press start, you'll see the little squares appear again. Um, sounds more or less the same. But here is where things become kind of interesting. If you press up, you can hear it's actually playing a little chord. Uh, maybe that might not actually be a chord, it might just be some ghastly random cacophony of notes, I don't know. Um, if you press select and move to the envelope and extend it a little, you can actually hear it's doing nice kind of chord type sounds. Um, one thing that I think is kind of cool, if you reverse the envelope, you get these nice kind of spooky fading up chord type sounds, which I quite like. Um, the... so let's put that back. Let's move back to the note. Um, changing to re-triggering the envelope on R and 
L is done by pressing B and the left button. In S mode, sorry, on the S channel it does something, sorry. On the S channel it does something slightly different. Um, so let's reset that for now. This is actually going to start detune mode, which is just a little bit tricky to understand. I don't quite follow it exactly, but I get the basics of it. If you move back to just the standard note and you press up and down, you can hear it changing the note. Oh, sorry, one thing that I forgot. When you're in chord mode, again, if you hold B and R and press left and right, it changes the octave of the chord exactly the same. Sorry. Okay. If you press B and L, you can probably just about see the little squares change into these little kind of horizontal T-shapes. This is detune mode, which is really cool, and you can get lots of kind of interesting sounds out of it. The leftmost square seems to control the root note. The other three... Oh, sorry, the leftmost T or whatever you want to call it, changes the root note. The other three change the um, amount of detune on the harmonics, I assume. Um, going into my crappy digital camera microphone and then being compressed by YouTube, I'm really not sure how well you're going to be able to hear this. But if you hold down B and R, again, you can move up and down through the octaves. Again, I really, really like this with the... with the reversed envelope. I think it sounds really nice. I think that's really kind of groovy. So, we've got arpeggios and chords which I really did kind of stumble my way through, so I hope you don't mind too much. But that's another function of Nanoloop. Um, I think... Let's just turn these off. I think we've probably covered pretty much all of the actual sound generation aspects of Nanoloop now. So... The next two or three tutorials that I do are going to be talking about how you can put some of these ideas together into songs and how you can sync Nano Loop with a couple of other devices. Um, that brings us to the end of the chords and arpeggios tutorial and this song, for, well, the song for this week, I sound like a kids TV presenter. The song for this tutorial is by OK Ikumi, and I don't feel brave enough to try and pronounce the title, so I will just link it. Thank you for listening.